So um, I just wrote a book uh, called Mobile Magic. Well, I kind of crowdsourced it from all the, a lot of the really smart people around the Saatchi network, where we, um, I, I was the first president of the, um, the Can Mobile Lions uh, mobile jury uh, two years ago. And one of the things that we, that we noticed when we were looking at, we were going through thousands and thousands and thousands, or it would be about 2,000 entries, so I guess just 1,000 and 1,000 entries. And we, um, and we were noticing that, that a lot of the work was either very much the same or it was very simple. And we, we, we just didn't see anything in there. We kept saying, well, we think there's a lot of white space out there, right? So then fast forward a year, and I get asked by Wiley um, if, um, if I'd like to write a book about mobile marketing. I think it was actually like my boss, Kevin Roberts, didn't want to write a book, so he said, well, why don't you call Tom? I'll be funnier in about 10 minutes. Just stick in there for the iPad. It's coming. It's coming. I'm just teasing you. So the plug for the book here is what, what, what I basically went back and did is took the experience that I had from, from the Canned Lions. And, um, and the, uh, the book is about production. It's about how to hire people. It's about um, how to make a voice for your brand. And I've made some real practical stuff in there as well. I have a section at the end of every chapter called Five Things You Can Do Right Now, and they're always free. So in my presentation here, I have three things you can do right now so we can go through that. So I only have one screen of stats, don't worry. I have like boatloads of videos, so we can like watch videos, and we can talk about it mobile. I'm gonna try and make this guy smile. As soon as I make him smile, we're good. Okay, so a um, Millware Brown report, got it yesterday. Um, um, the smartphone daily usage has now surpassed TV watching in the US, and in China, where I just came from, I was in Shanghai, we're working on some mobile stuff up there. It's nearly double the time that's there. So when people are saying, um, I don't know if I'm gonna get into mobile yet, if you aren't in mobile now, you need to be. So one of the things that I'm gonna be showing today and talking about today is um, what I put in the book and we call MIST. And it's four principles that I, try to, that I do talk to all of my teams about. Is the idea that we're gonna make mobile, is it something that's intimate? Is it something that's personal to the person that we wanna get it? I will not fall off the edge of the stage. Is it something that's social, right? Mobile is social. Mobile's been social since, since it began, right? And is it something that you can have a transaction at the end of it? One of the things that I don't do is build things just to build things and build things just for fun. We used to spend half our time trying to talk our clients out of building apps because it wasn't the right time for them to be doing it. But now it's not, even, it's not only the right time for them to be building apps, it's time for them to be doing mobile web, it's time for them to be doing partnerships, and what I'm going to do today is show you some work. So everything I'm going to show you has this stuff in common. It all has the customer at the center of the experience, right? Mobile is personal, it needs to be about me. It all uses commonly, uh, commonly available tech and tools. So a lot of the stuff, I'm, a few of the things I'm going to show you today were all done in Instagram, but they're still branded mobile content, right? Everything in here is easy to share. It builds on existing habits, right? So when I talk with a creative team or when you're talking with the teams that you work with, that we, what we don't want to do is have people having to learn new things every time they interact with our brand, right? We want to fit in and mesh into what their world is rather than them coming to us. And then finally, these are dead simple, right? So mobile and is it? That's the first thing I always say to somebody when they bring the work in. So I'm going to show you two pieces of work for each thing, and then I'll kind of recap it at the end. Does that sound fun? No, we'll get an iPad. You can have my iPad if you stay with me for 30 minutes. I'm just teasing. So this is something, yeah, I am just teasing. So this is something that's done by two, like, 14-year-olds that work with us in Guatemala. It's called Meat Pack, and I'll just play it down. If you can take the volume, if I go like this and you can bring it down, that'd be good. Go like this. You ready? Okay. Here's Meat Pack. Meatpack is the trendiest shoe store in Guatemala, a brand known for its edgy, cutting style and a store known for its unique discounts in limited edition kicks including brands like Adidas, Nike and Reebok. An icon for the sneakerhead subculture with over 60,000 fans on their fan page in less than a year. They needed to launch a new promotion to lift up to their hardcore fans. 
an innovative way to earn your discount. We created Hijack, an enhancement for the official Meatpack app used by our customers. Using GPS tracking technology that marks every competitor's store of the brand sold at Meatpack, so every time one of our sneakerheads enters one of the stores, it triggers a special notice with a promotion. Hijack sends an alert to the person's mobile with a discount that starts at 99% and decreases by 1% every second that goes by, making the countdown stop until you reach our store. More than 600 customers were hijacked from the competitors in a week. One customer, Pedro Rodriguez, got a record-breaking 89% discount. This is the first promo campaign that started the sale in the competitors' stores. And in Guatemala, they have chickens in their shoe stores. But when the guys were working on this, they didn't have a lot of money. And when you look at that and you go 60,000 people, like 60,000 people in Guatemala is basically every single person in Guatemala, I think. And what, what they did was, rather than build something new, they built an enhancement to something that was already there. So it came in the update, didn't have to teach anybody new. And what they did was they pushed a message out and told people, hey, when you're in the mall, make sure that your app is on and you're going to get a discount. You possibly get a discount. The other thing about this presentation is most of the things that are in here are people that, uh, that denied me the access of putting their stuff into the book. So, ha. <laughs> if you hear from Scrabble, ha. All right, so we're going to look at Scrabble Wi-Fi. Smartphones. They connect countries, buy things, organize lives, entertain us with hundreds of games. But the more we use them, the more we're forgetting how to spell. That's why we created Scrabble Wi-Fi, a playful way to turn words into passwords. Scrabble placed free Wi-Fi hotspots in places where you can't get an internet connection. But to get online, you had to prove your spelling skills. Select the Scrabble network. Create any word using up to seven letters. Play it. The score from the word is converted into free Wi-Fi minutes. And the higher your score, the longer the connection. Facebook, your score and time. All right, what a great idea. All right, everybody wants Wi-Fi. Can't get it in, in certain places. This is done around in, in, in France. Uh, totally, totally on for the brand, right? And easy and cheap, and you don't have to teach anybody to play Scrabble. Fantastic, right? So of these three things here, things that I, I and this is, this is actually what I talked to my team about, right? is have a uniquely mobile reason for creating an idea, right? Those are uniquely mobile. You don't do that with prints. You aren't going to run around uh, you know, with a laptop in a mall. And take advantage of the built-in features of mobile devices, right? So the location services, movement, the microphone, the camera, everything that's in there, right? Bring everything together or bring together the things that you need. And finally, always consider what your mobile audiences want from you, right? So I didn't know that I wanted Wi-Fi from Scrabble, but God, they gave it to me, and that's really cool. And so I'll share that online with my friends, and then we can all kind of have this Scrabble brand experience, and we can get the name out there very simply. OK, now we're up to the eye, intimate. With great data comes great responsibility and fun. And uh, the app, these guys turned me down, and I chased them for weeks. OK, this is Delta. Does anybody use the Delta iPad app? Go to America and fly from New York to Los Angeles just to use it. It's awesome. You can charge it to Saatchi, Australia. OK. Let's have, or New Zealand. You're here, aren't you? Yeah. OK, let's have a look at this. Don't just book your next flight. Experience it with Fly Delta for the iPad. It's your chance to explore the world on a whim. Just browse our weekly offers and imagine the places you'll go. Select a location and see what to expect. What you should know. What your social network is saying. And what you might want to do while you're there. And when you're ready to book, choose from over 600 destinations. Once you're booked, 
keep track of where you're headed by using our interactive trip maps. See how much mileage you earn. And let our new feature called What's Next take the guesswork out of travel by helping you know what to do and when to do it. Get the most out of your flight with trip extras like priority boarding and mileage booster. And entertainment choices selected especially for your destination. And on the day of your trip, What's Next will be there to show you what matters most, like stepping up to a comedy comfort. Check into your flight. Get your boarding pass delivered to your smartphone. Add Wi-Fi or other trip extras. And even get directions to the airport. Once you reach 10,000 feet, you can connect to the in-flight Wi-Fi service. And use the flight tracker to see exactly where you are. Or switch the view to glass bottom jet to see the journey in a whole new way. Can you bring the volume down? So, this feature, if, if the video doesn't show it very well, you basically hold your iPad down and it shows you what's underneath you and what's happening on your flight path. But what it does is it maps brands and it maps people's information in there. So if you're flying over the Grand Canyon, it gives you all of the, all of the really cool things that people have tweeted about, Instagram, Pinterest, all this great stuff. So Delta, right, this pretty straight-laced airline, not only brings absolutely everything together, they bring all this content together, they customize playlists and music for where you're going, but they always also give you this crazy thing to be able to play with when you're stuck between you know, two sweaty, disgusting businessmen on the way to Los Angeles. So that, that to me, I look at that and I go, everything's all in one, it's all super useful, it's lean, there isn't anything else that's in there, but it does everything for me, it's really intimate. All I have to do is put in my, in my frequent flyer number and then it just starts giving me stuff. I had another one there, but uh, I, I wanna crank through a few other ones. So for, for intimate, you know, use big data and listening to create personalized experience, right? So uh, clients, how many clients here? <laughs> clients never raise their hand. Yeah, you, client. <laughs> right, so everybody's collecting data. Media companies collecting data. Saatchi's collecting data. All the agencies collecting data. Clients collecting data, right? And we just have big stacks of data and we don't necessarily always know what we're gonna look for and what we're gonna do with it. So what we do is we look for how can we take that to make a unique personalized experience as much as we can without being like a creepy stalker, right? You know, have a brand experience so good that your customers want to give you data. Delta's thing is so good that people want to give it data. I mean, it's crazy how many people use that app. And when you're on the plane, see people using that app. And then blend in relevant social tools and behaviors, right? If, if it's possible for you to put social content into what you're doing, put it in, right? The lawyers freak out about that. The creatives freak out about it because they don't have control. The clients kind of freak out about it because they're worried about the brand. There are lots of different ways to filter it, but people are going to use social whether you, whether you want them to or not, right? And the best way to control it is for you to be the editor. Isn't he awesome? I looked at that, I looked at that when I was making the thing and I was like, I never noticed him before. He's like, what's, that's a phone? Right? Okay, so this is um, Adidas highest goal. So this is, these, these two are um, two social examples I think are pretty awesome and simple and cool. Roll them. An interactive projection 200 meters high in Tokyo. Fans can make a virtual throw in with their smartphone. Japan team striker Shinji Kagawa receives the ball and makes a brilliant shot on goal. How does it work? Users access a mobile site and log out of Facebook. Using a compass sensor, they determine the direction of the goal, then throw in the ball with their smartphone. If their throw is successful, their Facebook profile is projected on the screen as the ball reaches Kagawa, who receives the ball and powerfully takes it into the building. A huge ball sinks deeply into the building as the fan's message appears. There are 11,700 different projection patterns that change according to the direction, distance, and strength of the throw-in, which also determine if a goal is made or not. Thousands of fans threw in, whether at home watching the game on TV, at sports bars, or outside. Adidas created dynamic contacts to connect fans high up in the Tokyo sky. Right? How good is that? You can't get to the game, it's crazy expensive, or it's like 5,000 miles away, but you're a super fan. Right? 
So you can interact with the players. It's really simple, right? Throw the ball, you don't have to do anything else. Connect your Facebook or your Weibo or whatever the, whatever the profile happens to be. You become part of it. That content was captured and played back through all of the Adidas stuff. And the thing I like about that best, you don't have to be in Tokyo. You can be in, you can be in your living room playing that. Right? So when you're thinking about mobile, mobile doesn't necessarily mean you know, being out and about and running around and, oh, I've got to talk to somebody right this second. You know, mobile needs to be wherever that person happens to be, and that's why I really love that case. And it's simple. Right? We don't have to teach anybody. What do you, what do, you do in foot, I almost said soccer, foot, oh, I'm in Australia, soccer. Throw it in. I lived in New Zealand for a really long time, so I'm allowed to make fun of Australians. Oh, now they're going to turn on me even for an iPad. All right, so this is something we did. Our team uh, out in uh, um, Los Angeles did this for uh, Lexus. It's called InstaFilm. I'll talk about it later. So InstaFilm was born out of listening, right? But it's also mobile, but we, they didn't really go anywhere, but they actually created a piece of content together, right? So all the people that were there were all influencers. So that, that project didn't have a massive above the line budget and carpet bombing TV with, with, with ads. It was about trying to reach that audience, the Instagram-y kind of you know, influencer audience. So what they did was identify those people that were Instagrammers, that had a huge following, that were also um, car enthusiasts, Right? Brought them all together. I mean, if you look at it, it's, it's not, they're not on Le Mans. They're in, like, they're in Saatchi's parking lot, I think, in, in Torrance, California. Right? It didn't matter where they were. It was the experience and what they captured it. Right? So media money comes way down. We put that money into getting those people there, created that content. There's an eight-minute film. There's, we we, we kept, kept it going, kept it going, kept it going. But we didn't have to build anything. Right? We took a behavior that people were already doing. In, found the influencers and then brought them together and then did what they would naturally do, which would be take pictures of things with their mobile. So for this one, you know, we make everything, you gotta make everything really simple to share. So whether it's a photo of your product or it's a price or it's, you know, something, some bit of your brand and bit of your brand essence that you need to go out, you need to make it really simple for people to do it. Aside from it being good enough for people to share, but it needs to be simple. Uh, build on existing social behaviors. I think I kind of ripped on that before, but trying to teach somebody to do something new is futile, right? So when people, well, not futile, but you got to have a new iPad for them to get, right? But the the if you tap into what people are already doing, you don't have to. You you can spend the time having them be with your brand rather than teaching them to do something else, right? So when we do film, when we did the Instagram thing, we didn't, we didn't say, you, you, can, you have to use exactly that filter. We just said, okay, lay down on the ground and you do this frame, right? And find and recruit influencers. Influencers are, are fairly easy to find with social, with social um, listening now. And especially in mobile because, you know, the, the you know, fashion brands now are being built off of the back of, uh, you know, apps like Pose and Trendable, right? 
where these, where you can put up pictures of shoes and pick, put up pictures of clothes and have 10,000 10, people comment on it, and it never goes anywhere near the internet. It's all on mobile, right? So if you go and find those people, you can start getting them to do some of the work for you, or, or a lot of the work for you. And finally, selling stuff, right? So I have two here, uh, another, one for, another one for Adidas, and then uh, one more from us. Oh, that's right, I have to click something, don't I? There we go. When shoppers come to a store after closing hours, they're basically left window shopping. On the other hand, those retailers often have great e-commerce solutions available around the clock. But what if you combine the two properties into one? Within 10 months of rapid prototyping, we went through multiple versions and built a fully functional prototype. The experience speaks for itself. Touch, drag, and explore the products. All in life size, right in front of you. We used professional dancers for the interactive shoot to pull off some pretty impressive moves. Since smartphones are now our customers' first screen, we wanted the system to integrate in the easiest possible way with the devices. But we knew that asking people to find, download, and open an app for that connection was way too time consuming. In the end, we found a way that was so great, we had to patent it. If you know how to use a shopping bag, you know how to use our shopping bag. Just drag and drop the products straight to your mobile phone. Our users could walk away with the stuff they like and then purchase it later in their own comfort zone. And of course, share their chosen favorites with friends. Right, so Adidas, you look at it and you go, okay, so it's a prototype and they did it in one place and they did, did you know, shopping, linked to mobile, linked to getting codes. But the thing that I love about this is really quickly, and it's already starting to happen, Uniqlo's starting to do some experiments with this in Japan. You're gonna be able to set up a store, you're gonna be able to set up a store directly in front of your competitor's stores that don't exist, right, with mobile, right? When, when we get to the, well, we're already getting to the point, where I'm carrying the Nike app and I know to keep it on when I'm near an Adidas store and I'm standing in front of it, that app can know, okay, he's standing in front of an Adidas store, Tom's bought these sneakers before, he's also bought this, he likes these colors, they'll, you, they'll be able to serve content to me immediately while I'm standing in front of somebody else's store, right? So this is the kind of thing where you need to be thinking about proximity as well as what, what's the experience that I'm gonna be doing there when, when somebody's there talking, right? And it's all about collecting data, it's, and it's all about personalization. But you know, the thing I like about this, it's a little shonky with the, you know, I gotta drag the thing and put it into my, into my box, but right now, you know, the, the millennials, I don't wanna call them millennials, but you know, millennials and even younger, we, the audience that we have to talk to in the next, say, three to, five, maybe seven years on the outside edge, they only use touch screens. You know, they, they're used to doing things with proximity. They're used to doing things with their voice, right? And all of that stuff that they're carrying with them are going to be smart clothes, right? Or smart mobile phones. And that's why I like that, because A, it's really cool, and B, you can copy it really easily. I love when they say, like, we patented it. What did you patent? A shopping bag? The internet? I don't know. We could call them and ask them on our mobile phone. All right, so this is Tag the Weather. I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about Tag the Weather. So um, our, we have a really scrappy office in, in, uh, in Stockholm, in Sweden, and, uh, and they do a lot of work with us for P&G. Anybody here from P&G? XP&G? You're gonna trick me later. You're gonna find me outside, aren't you? And uh, they, have, they have really big challenges because P&G wants, wants to have a lot of stuff in mobile, they wanna have a lot of stuff out there in digital, but in Stockholm, they obviously have smaller budgets, right? So they need to be really, really thinking about it. So they, they got this brief, this rather hard brief, that said um, Venus razors, so the, the um, Gillette razor that's um, for, um, aimed at, at women, the sales go, into, um, go down during the winter because obviously people aren't, aren't or they're, not, they're not using them as much and then they get this brief in the middle of winter to bring the sales up. So this is what they did. We can talk about it a bit more. From this weather 24 hours ago, we live here. 
Whoa, this was yesterday. It, okay. lo it looks like this, like for five months every year. Really? Yes. And Can you survive? <laughs> Gillette Venus has one tough competitor on the Swedish market, the winter weather. Swedish women put up with darkness, rain, snow, hail, and temperatures down to minus 30 degrees Celsius. As a consequence, sales of Venus razors and blades plummet. That means five months of lowered sales every year. So Gillette Venus needed an idea that could connect the brand with the target group during the dark season. In January 2013, we launched Tag the Weather and made those tough climate conditions work in our consumers' favor. We invited Swedish women to show off their everyday weather to a jury of sun-spoilt fashion bloggers. Steffi from Miami, Alana from Rio, and Crystal from Sydney. The photo that managed to evoke the most weather sympathy among the jury won a trip to Miami for two. Photos uploaded on Instagram were instantly given a bad weather score. Based on geolocation, the score got higher the worse the conditions were compared to historical weather data. Consumers could convert the bad weather points into a dynamic discount on Venus Pro Skin Sensitive. Thanks to a co-op with an e-retailer, purchase was just a click or tap away. The campaign struck a chord. Over 5,800 photos were uploaded in 14 days, a benchmark for Swedish Instagram activation. The bad weather scores aided our jury as they picked a finalist every day and video blogged their motivations. As campaign finale, we printed the finalist photos on canvases and hosted an exhibition on the rooftop of Hotel Breakwater in Miami. Jury member Steffi Kunchman announced the winning photo on Facebook via a live bamboozer stream. The happy winner got to escape the Swedish winter and head for some well-deserved sun therapy in Miami Beach. Using mobile as main media, Tag the Weather gave Gillette Venus a relevant voice during the dark season. As a result, both brand interaction and sales went through the roof. Like you couldn't tell that that was going to explode, right? But the, the thing that I like about this, and I, I, I love this idea, they, had, they found one content partner who could also do the sales, right? So the, the people that were pushing it out, the sales channel that were pushing it out to their, to their female target audience were also doing the sale. And the other thing that I like about it is that you're, you're asking them to do something, but it's something they're gonna do anyway, right? They're gonna go, oh man, the weather's crappy today, and take a picture of the ice or the weird moose that showed up in their backyard, right? And then all they have to do is upload it, they don't have to do anything else, it looks at data, and then it gives them back a coupon to get a discount that they can click on it once and buy it, right? Simple, simple, simple. The money went into sending them over to Miami and to Steffi from Sydney doing that, but it was all really simple, right? The, the bloggers would film themselves on their phone, constantly updated, right? Simple content, having them do things they were already doing and selling um, tons of razors. I suppose in Sweden, tons of razors is like eight. We sold eight razors, no, I'm just kidding. I was just in China, and when you show stuff like this, you go, we got 5,000 interactions on the thing, and they go, that's this building. That's my apartment, right? So transactional, these are the things we look at, right? Have a clear method for how you're gonna measure it, right? Don't just go, I'm gonna do a commerce campaign before you get started, figure out you're gonna measure it, and figure out what you wanna get out of it, right? And the big thing that I like to tell clients is, let's test and learn rather than overbuild. And what I mean by that is, let's not always go out and build something first. Let's try it with maybe somebody else's property. Let's try to do a partnership. Let's try to use somebody else's app. Let's try to figure out some other way that we can build into someone else's thing. So A, we don't have to blow all our money saying to people, hey, we've got a website over here. We've got an app over here. We can put that money into doing a better campaign, right? And we can learn from it. And we can do it a hell of a lot faster. And finally, the frictionless path to purchase. There's, I think you've probably been hearing that, the sales funnel and the path to purchase, you know, and, and probably all the presentations today, but it's true. But you gotta get it down so that it's as simple and simple as possible. I'm changing color now to change the mood. Changing the mood. All right, so I did five things to do right now for the audience here. So I've got one of these at the end of every chapter in my book, and you don't have to spend a nickel. You just gotta turn your phone on and do something, right? Well, one of these you do. All right, so make someone in your organization the mobile god, 
right? I always think that this is the easiest way to get mobile into your company. Find somebody who is the person you're catching playing games, the person who's always downloading stuff, the person who's mobile, 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 right? And give that to them and say, your job is going to be the mobile god, right? And have that person have very you know, specific things that they do. You need to tell us about what's hot in our segment. You need to come in and give presentations. And give them a little budget. I mean, we give our mobile gods you know, a couple hundred bucks to buy apps. They love it. Right? And they become knowledgeable, and then they spread that knowledge out. You don't have to call them God. You can call them, like, guru, something like that. Super nerd. OK. And then you, personally, have to become the biggest consumer of all the stuff around your business. There is no excuse for you not to have all of your competitors' apps, to not have all their web pages booked, to not be buying stuff from them all the time, to not be following everything that's in your sector because it is so easy. There's no excuse, absolutely no excuse, right? You, you, you know, if you're in fashion, every single fashion app, right? And, and make, make 50 fake identities. Make whatever it takes, but be in there, learn from it, because it doesn't cost you any money. It might cost you a couple bucks, but there's not much on the app store that costs 49.95, right? No excuse. All right, ask yourself, is this really, truly a mobile idea? So if somebody brings you an idea, and it has a big, uh, 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 like, a, uh, like a site map for a mobile app, I go, go away, All right? What are you doing? This isn't a mobile thing. This is an experience. So we're designing experiences, right? And I always say, is this really, truly a mobile idea? And they go, yeah. And then I go, would you do it? And the answer is no we go away and take off 15 layers of boxes. But that's the main thing to think about, right? Is this really mobile? Is this native? Is it going to be good? Uh, put some money away. I mean, it's, it's, the wave has hit. The wave is now spreading. It's like, you know, Hurricane Sandy flooding my house in New York. It's here, right? So you don't have to put 40% of your budget away or 20% of your budget away. But you got to put something away. Right? You gotta start thinking about it. You gotta start testing and learning. And if, you're, and if you're already doing stuff, is my fifth point, if you're not doing anything, you gotta start right now. Right? And if you are doing stuff, you gotta do more. I know that sounds simplistic, but I live in this world, and I've lived in this world for 12 years, right? And as people sit and go, oh, you know, I'll think about it later, oh, you yeah, know, that sounds really complicated, the bus leaves, the bus leaves, the bus leaves, the bus leaves, and every time the bus leaves, it's full of, it's full of customers. Right? Customers that you're going to have to double your investment to get back. So my final two thoughts. Now I'm bringing it way down. Purple. Right? Everybody relaxed? Surprise them with the blindingly simple. Wow, this is really easy to use. This experience that I've done is really easy. Everything that I've done with this brand on mobile is really easy. Right? That's what you want. You do not want to be the one in the app store that's saying, like, this really sucks, and I can't find anything, so I went over and used the competitor's apps, and so should all of you, right? And finally, having a super ultra high-tech, wild, crazy mobile thing is no excuse for having a crappy idea, right? So when you're thinking about it, I'm a creative director, so, and I'm an art director within that kind of like subgenre of evil advertising scum, right? is the, the thing that you got to remember is you can have the most crazy technology in the world and be using the most high-tech stuff. If you don't have a great idea behind it, especially a great, really simple idea behind it, you're doing yourself a disservice, and you're doing your business a disservice, and especially your clients. So that's me. Thank you very much. I didn't fall off the stage. I was very surprised. That's awesome. Are we going to do questions? I've got five minutes and 48 seconds before you give away the iPad. Oh, Anybody got qu any questions? Only one lever. You're not getting an iPad, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask you a question. Can I get a Okay, you can have a question. Yeah. So a question I'll ask for you is um, wh where do you sit on the whole um, app lean in, lean out? Do we have a mobile strategy, yep. responsive website type thing? Yep. Where should companies start to actually start making those decisions? Well, you have to, I mean, all, all, everything that you do on the internet has to work on a mobile device. It, it just, you can't 
my mother would kill me, you, can't, you cannot not have something that's uh, available on every screen. I mean, it's, that's, that's basic plumbing. The, the thing where I think that people start getting confused and start spending a lot of money is, you remember a few years ago, it was like, everybody's got an app, right? And you'd, you'd go get their app and it didn't do anything, right? Or you would go and find something that was supposed to be you know, really useful and it wasn't, right? And the people lost a lot, people spent a boatload of money doing crap and when people do that, I go, great, that's cool. We can, what lessons can we learn from this, right? And now it's basically, when we're talking with clients about is, you know, do, do, you, do, do you need a really good functional mobile website or do we need to build into somebody else's mobile web experience or do we need to maybe white label another app or do we need to build our own, right? I like to have all the options out there. And what I want to do is the thing that's going to make the person that we're trying to connect to buy something, feel something, do some kind of action. So yeah, I mean, mobile web is just kind of like, that's table stakes. It's where you go from there and how you spread it out from there that is where I think it gets interesting. And uh, I guess for you, what would you say is the new um, WhatsApp, WhatsApp billion dollar app for you that you've seen? Um, have you guys seen Boxfish? Have you seen Boxfish? Boxfish is, um, it was in my presentation, but I took it out because the video is really bad. But I can explain it. I'll, I'll act it out as Kabuki theater. The, um, <laughs> the Boxfish, you just, I, it, I don't know if, I'm not sure if it'll work here, but you can go look at it online. It's an, it's an app for iPad and phone. And uh, Deutsche Telekom is, is like shoveling um, euros into it. And what it does is it listens to and records every word that is spoken on every single channel on television, right? So it's basically a, a search engine for every conversation that's happening. So Jerry Seinfeld doing something stupid, you know, the, uh, Kim Kardashian saying something stupid, or the news. It collects everything, right? So then you plug your social networks into it, it looks at what you like, and then it starts giving you content and programming based on that. And on top of that, it gives you all the hashtags, it gives you, it gives you everything. So you can basically control your TV, but what it's doing is customizing all the stuff that's coming to you. I mean, Boxfish is really, really cool. And, and that's where I think it gets interesting is because, like I look at WhatsApp and I, just, I go, rock on billionaire WhatsApp guys, that is awesome, right? And that's, we're, we're kind of getting into that bubbly phase again where people are going to start spending zillions of dollars on IM and games and, you know, like all of this kind of stuff. But where I think it's the most interesting is where you get this rich content that is not going to go away. Television, broadcast, TV, movies, none of that. And that's not, it's not going to go away. Then how you get it into mobile and then how do you get it where people can take it with them, right? When, when you have something like Boxfish, where you can sit in the back of the cab in Jakarta and control your, in, you know, be able to watch what you like from New York without all the freaky laws and legal things, that's when you're gonna have really powerful things for brands. I mean, imagine brands being able to get into the conversations that are happening in television shows that happened, that were filmed 50 years ago. Whoa, man. I love that stuff. Mind officially blown. Yeah, I hope you join me in thanking Tom Eslinger for that. That was, couldn't be a better person to close out the event.